so let's pick it up and we'll put it over there. So we just got the chunk or the uh, the differential out of the uh, the 850. And uh, sorry, I didn't get no video. We just been busy uh, with with other things going on here. But anyway, we we did get the uh, the differential out of the 850. This is Monday night, and uh, we just got got finished watching Kyla ride the the 450. And of course, it's dark now, so now we turned our attention to taking the, the differential out of the 850. Here it is. So what do you think, Brandon? Oh boy, this is the bottom. That's the bottom. That's the bottom. So. And that is the top. So, I wonder if Mr. Chad Pollard can TIG weld that back up. You think? Well, it still works. I sort of doubt it. I bet you every one of those bolts are missing. All of them are broke. I bet yeah. you every one of them are missing. Let's pull it apart and find out. Get the uh, yeah, T30 or something like that. I'm not sure what that is. All right, so we're getting ready to pull this thing apart and uh, try to figure out. Uh, what happened which we probably suspect those dang bolts all right all right so we've gotten all the bolts apart brandon be careful don't, don't destroy that oh my goodness a little bit of a little bit of metal in there as we suspected every one of the bolts are gone and um i wonder if it has sheared oh my god it has sheared every one of the bolts off yep shouldn't have hit them jumps right no uh pull this Pull this gear off. Um, so separate that. You'll have to separate it with a, uh, a big flat. There you go. All right, now let me look at, yeah, every one of the bolts are broken. <laughs> yeah, all of them. They're all broken. So they didn't necessarily back out, although so they may have- one broke Well, no, they, they may have loosened up and allowed it to rock and it just sheared them all off. You see what I'm saying? None of them back completely out, but that's exactly what's happened is, um, but anyway, so so the visco lock is inside here. You can take these two little here pieces or little two hex head bolts here out, and the visco lock is inside there, which I'm going to do on the new one over there. I just wanted to disassemble this one and see um, really what had happened to it. But uh, this complete unit here is junk. But anyway, so um, that's exactly what happened, and uh, and of course once it sheared the bolts, it started spitting the bolts out and and they, they just pushed it out to exit it. Look here, Brandon, you can see where it was rolling. Yeah. Did you hear a noise? Did you ever hear a noise before it did it? Probably before not. Before it did it. No, no, as soon as it did it, it, it definitely, all, you can hear all kinds of stuff going on in front of you. Now keep in mind, this is the four-wheeler too that when we put back together after we did all the gusseting, you remember that? We had a noise in it and we even had Robert. I also did hit a tree with the left front pretty hard. At Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man. I don't think that would have did it. The last time we rode it, but. Or, do you think the motocross jumps did it? That could be very bad. <laughs> when you. Dad, don't worry about it. I'll roll all the motocross jumps. Uh -huh. Okay. You cleared that all right. one big jump. You cleared hey, you're making it worse. Hey, don't say that. Yeah, you're making it worse. Brandon rolled everything, right, Colin? Did you see him jump anything? No. Don't tell his mom that. <laughs> so. This is Colin Lay. He rides a little uh, uh, 90 in FTR. Uh, not sure where he finished at. He had some problems in the race, um, but he's the little uh, peewee racer that uh, this is his dad, Matt. This is the boy that uh, we had put together that little DRR for him. And um, uh, he will be coming over this weekend riding with Kyla and Brandon. But So anyway, a uh, couple of things could have happened here. Motocross jumps could have did it. or I'm sure it was... the motocross jumps didn't help it or it's just uh unfortunate circumstances and uh bolt started breaking and next thing you know it's catastrophic yeah so anyway so we'll we'll we'll, we'll take it one way or the other doesn't it doesn't really it's been it's been we know it's been a while so yeah it's time for a new one anyway uh not sure how many hours what are you thinking 13 or 12 rounds uh 20 hours 25 Maybe about 25 hours of hard racing on it. So so it's probably time, you know what I mean? But but the, the unfortunate thing, just like just like that, well there, see you Matt, see you Colin. So, so the unfortunate thing is just like that thing right there, it ended up breaking at the last very, very race that we were gonna uh, uh, change it out, swap it out. So anyway, all right, so, so we're, going, we're going to get all this mess here cleaned up. We're going to get the new one over here and get it apart and get the Visco lock out of it and not quite sure what we're going to do with these bolts just yet, but I'm still thinking about it. Be TIG welded, 
um, or um, I may aircraft wire them. Not positive just yet. All right, Brandon. So, so we've taken the broken diff, okay, which is in pieces, and uh, we've set over there on the um, the shelf. Uh, we will more than likely throw it all away. I just want to dissect it a little bit more. I think what happened was is those bolts were not welded or tack welded, and they weren't wire nutted. They were Loctite. I personally did that one back last January. I pulled the Visco lock out of it because I originally purchased this four-wheeler uh, from a guy in North Carolina, bone stock, for me a practice quad back whenever I was racing this time last year. So, uh, and of course I didn't like the Visco lock. So I, I personally pulled that out like the afternoon I brought this quad home and did that Visco lock. That's the second one that I've did. We have another one, uh, the other four wheeler over there that I did too. It did not weld them and did not uh, wire nut them. So uh, a little concerned about that one too, which we'll, we will get back to that one. I'm trying to get my GoPro to come back on. So, so we're getting ready to take this, uh, this is a brand new one here, and uh, we're getting ready to, to disassemble it so we can remove the Visco lock and then um, figure out how we're going to you know, lock these bolts in. So it's a T, what's a T40? So it's a T40 bit here. And those, and those have Loctite on them. You'll probably, you're probably going to see factory Loctite on them. Usually you know, you gotta, gotta be real careful not strip them. It is a lot better being that it's brand new. There is no oil on this thing. Normally when you pull them out of the four wheeler and they're used, they've got oil everywhere. So, uh, but this one's completely brand new. Just got it from, from BNR uh, Motorsports, which come from BRP, obviously, at Can-Am. So, so what we want to do is you, you, you remove the case halves and then, then we want to, we, we want to remove the, um, this gets set to a side. So, so, so this is what happened to the other one. These are the bolts, okay, that sheared on the, the other one, okay? So what I'm thinking about doing, there's people that are tack, that are TIG welding these, tacking them, okay? Just so they don't back loose. I think that's what happened to that other one. I think what happened to that other one is, I think these loosen a little bit, and then it started racking, and that's like that's what breaks them. So what I'm thinking I might do on this one, possibly um, is I'm gonna take a drill bit drill through there drill through there and like um, safety wire all these together so they don't turn um, uh, because I feel like if we don't get good penetration with the tack weld that may break also and I think for me personally I think I'm gonna just I'm on I'm on aircraft thread them okay and I'll show you guys how to do that but so what's got to happen is is we've got to remove this ring gear with these here, Brandon, I think this is number six. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's number six. So uh, we got to remove these these here, and these will be Loctited. This is what is what's breaking on these guys' uh, Renegades. Um, there's a guy, uh, a Todd on YouTube. I think he's broke a couple of them this year. Um, but that's the only thing could be breaking on these things is these bolts are backing out, and they are breaking. And when these back out, of course, it's a it's a weapon inside the uh, the, the 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 cases here, and it just it busts it blows holes in them. So what we're going to do is uh, I think this is a number six. Now these things are probably going to be pretty tight. This is all factory. We have not touched this one. They come out pretty good. So you can see the blue Loctite. Okay, that's from the factory. Um, we will put red back on there. I will, I'm going to need some like dirty rags. This is going to get nasty. Last one. Okay, so what this is doing, and you see the blue Loctite on there. This is what's happening, okay? Those bolts are snapping. Okay, so even though these have Loctite on them from the factory, they're still they're still coming out. Well, I, I take that back. They're probably not coming out from the factory. It's when we do this Visco lock, that's when I think a lot of the problems are happening. Some guys are having them, you know, come loose and 
uh, without doing a visco. But anyway, so what we want to do is we want to pull this ring gear. Um, this thing's brand new, so everything's really, really nice and tight. But you want to pull this ring gear off this thing. Uh, give me like a flathead or something. Um, oh, first of all, I need to go give me a magic marker. So, so the first thing I want to do, I almost forgot about this. Um, I always just like to mark it. Okay, so I put a, a mark here. Now, it really doesn't really, it's not that crazy important, but I just line this gear back up. Now, it is important to line those two back up when we're doing this, but not, not the ring gear to that. So what I normally do is I just come around not not halfway because you can get it you can get it 180 degrees out so what i usually do is go about 90. then that way i can line i can line these marks back up um that's just me i don't know that that that's anything but so what we want to do is we want to pull this ring gear off here so we can get this this visco um, lock release so so, so that's the ring gear and on the other one over there that we showed you that this is what's happening you know, of course these bolts these bolts thread into that okay and they're snapping off so and of course then everything's junk at that point so we're going to lay this right there but this is the visco log now very 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 important these two bolts right here okay these two bolts right here have a loctite on them also there's two of them here and they will strip very 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 easy okay so we want to make sure that uh, when we pull these out, I always like throwing a little bit of heat. I'll walk over there and grab it here in a second. So I always like throwing a little bit of heat on there because they do have Loctite on there and heat will actually burn, you know, uh, burn the Loctite to be able to get them to come out a little bit easier. But if you strip these little jokers out, they're a devil to get in, get out because then you have to easy, the, easy, out, easy them out. Brandon, I need that little torch over there with the, uh, with the lighter. So. So just be extremely careful, you know, and take an impact and try to do it. Uh, you know, a, a small, you know, little DeWalt's what we're going to be using here. And uh, and make sure you hold down a lot of pressure on there because we don't want these things stripping out. So, um, all right. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to do one at a time here. Is that a blowtorch? Got a blowtorch. Oh, they got the, got the fan going. Oh, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm heating the bottom side of that because that's where the that's where the nut is or the bolt. I'm sorry, and it doesn't take much. This is just extra insurance, okay? That's all that is. I'm gonna lay this down, and then um, that's got some heat on there, so just hold a lot of pressure, and it should pop right out, okay? And that's a little bit warm, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is just do the other side the same way. I heat in this urinal area right here, obviously. We so got these little bolts here out of there, okay? So uh, you can see they, these got red Loctite on there. So I've, I've removed them. So they're going to almost set them over there. Now, um, I just merely lifted this up. This is a new one. So everything's going to come apart a little bit easier than the old order ones. And I think I had to take a, uh, a pry to get in there to get the old ones off. Anyway, so, so this just lifts up. And then I always just flip this upside down like this also have another rag here because we're getting ready to make a mess this is the clutches here and um, what it is is all this stuff works with as it as the the differentials turn it puts pressure on the other wheel whichever one is spinning i think i explained that to you in an earlier uh but any clip but anyway what happens is we want to remove everything that has anything to do with that okay these are all the clutches here of course this one's brand new these look like brand new you see this so you've got a fiber steel fiber steel just like a clutch on a uh on a uh a 450 or a sport bike or whatever so 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 that's that's the clutch part of it now what i want to do is this side here is almost done just need to make sure we wipe all that visco lock out or visco out of there also brandon i want to get some brake clean and um this don't have to be absolutely perfect okay but um but You'll see whenever I remove this side over here, it is extremely, extremely slimy. Um, so anyway, um, this one's new, so it, it doesn't look as bad, okay? But this side is completely done. All you wanna do is remove that, and just, just eliminate it, okay? The clutches, these are all the clutches here. 
And uh, you, you'll hear people say, well, I burnt my Visco up. Well, this is what they burn up. This is the clutches, okay? No different than the sport bike. Now, this is the little, this is the side we gotta do a little bit more work on. The first thing I try to do is I, I pop this little, this little gear out. Our axle slide into here, obviously. But this little gear, you'll see here, look at this, okay? This is, this is the Visco. This is what, whenever it turns, it puts the pressure and binds everything against those clutches there. But that's what we want to get rid of. I'm going to lay that right there. Um, and try to get some of this off there. Now, now, this is, I should have gloves on because this is extremely, extremely nasty. But what I'll do is I'll have Brandon break clean all this stuff off. But usually I just wipe all that stuff off. Lay it there. Now, this here... I sort of relate this stuff to almost like uh, caulking. Okay, have you ever have guys ever caulk windows or doors or something like that? When you get this on you, it's just you, you can't hardly get it off. It sticks to your rag and everything else. So what I want to do is uh, this is a seal right here, and we want to we want to just pop it out. Sometimes I got to go in from the other side, but I'll, I'll attempt to do it from this side. Nope, I can get it. All right, so I usually just take the screwdriver down there and just and just do a little bit of prying. Okay not gonna hurt anything this is also we don't want this okay we don't use this either it goes over here with the other stuff but you can see all the gooey stuff that's the visco so i'm gonna lay it right here and um but anyway uh that's a series of clutches and sorts you know a little different style than that but but you can see i don't want to take all this stuff apart but you, you you get the logistics of it and what happens is as this stuff spins the axle goes in here this little gear goes inside these clutches and as it spins it puts pressure on that visco and that's what locks up one or the side or the other this right here is uh this right here is important we want to try to get all this gooey stuff out of here you see that this is this is the this is part of the visco that we're taking out and all the gooey i'm not sure exactly what this stuff is called but the the whole unit is called a visco lock so but literally this stuff is nasty so brandon you'll have to um you'll have to get some brake clean and we'll try to clean it now um in my past um i've not you know you know get as clean as you can but you know it doesn't have to necessarily be spotless if you leave a little bit in there i'm guessing it doesn't really hurt anything i guess i think it'll just burn out just give me a little bit of squirt in there this is brake clean just to try to you know i would um here here at, at our house here we don't have a, a parts bin or a parts washer so anyway things are done a little differently here okay so so that's decent so so then we got to spin this thing over and uh this is going to look the same on this side as it does this side almost okay so what i gotta do is this, you gotta pull this snap ring off here you'll see the snap ring here let me see if i can do this brandon is going to actually help me hold it okay pull that snap ring off there same deal with this side may have to take the um may have to take the uh a pick or something or either um i think i pushed it through this side before brandon see if you can give me a little screwdriver or a pick or something i can push through there this is a like a seal there you go it actually pushed right out okay so this is sort of the same deal it's on the other side okay let me flip this over see all that all that gook we want to get all that out of there that's what we're trying to remove and we will not install all this stuff this we will but all this stuff will not be back put back in okay that stuff gets gets removed look at that and does not get put back in i gotta see it there i'm almost done with this one it's almost like that caulk stuff that i said here you go throw that one in the garbage bin if you don't mind a little shot of that this is brake clean. What we're doing is just trying to neutralize that and get the sticky. If you guys got a parts washer or a parts bin or something like that, it, that would that would work out really good. You don't you don't hurt anything in here. Um, so 
it doesn't really hurt anything. There is a seal there. I, I, I can't remember if I removed that or leave that, but it, it's not going to matter because we're not trying to seal anything um, as far as this, uh, this gook or whatever the heck they call it here. So it doesn't really matter. So I can't remember if I removed that or not. And when I go put it back together, I can... I mean, it doesn't, it's not going to affect anything. So, so what I'll probably do is just leave it. But I don't know that it... Uh, it doesn't do anything anymore, obviously, because because we're pulling pulling everything out of it. And you're going to have dip oil in there now, okay? So you can see the you can see the holes there. So so the so the the, the oil will be able to go through side to side. All right. So so essentially, what happens is we're going to throw all this stuff away, okay? Or the, these items. This is the Visco. Um, what we are saving out of all that is obviously the gear here, the two two halves here. Now I didn't remove this seal. You can if you want. I'm gonna leave it. Doesn't hurt anything sitting in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna put all this back together. And like I tell you, um, don't have to be perfectly clean. It'll be fine. Just get all the Visco, remove all that. What I normally do is take this back in there. And I shove it back in there. Now it went in a little bit stiff because of that seal still in there, but obviously it turns out. Mm, grade eight bolts are hard, huh? So we uh, we move forward a little bit. So um, uh, red lock tighted these, put these back in. So 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 they're lock tighted in, okay? But uh, we also now this will be the first time I've done this. Um, the one that we just busted. Uh, I removed and red lock tighted these bolts, put them back in, and we have been running like that since last January, almost 12 months, or been 12 months, okay? So I'm thinking, uh, you know, if I, if, I, if I aircraft these, you can see what I've done here. So what I've done is I've drilled a hole here and then 180 degrees on the backside. Uh, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these bolts in there Lock tight them in. Brandon's cleaned them all up. Still got a little bit of blue residue, but for the most part, clean them all up. And then I'm gonna run the aircraft wiring through there and aircraft wire all these together. So, um, not quite sure that it's gonna work, but we're gonna attempt it. I wanna look at it and see what it looks like when it's all done and then evaluate it. So, um, I think it's gonna work. So, let's go ahead and get some Loctite on these, get the ring and pinion back on. This is all put back together. Um, I have thrown away in the garbage all the um, visco lock stuff. So, and you know, everything's pretty clean here. So, uh, we're gonna throw this ring gear back on here and let's see if we'll all see right, what so happens here. What I've done is I've run all, I've put lock tight on these and I've run them all in there snug. Okay. Now, uh, our friend over at BNR, uh, Ryan, Robert. did message. I'm sorry, <laughs> Robert. Both of those guys are good dudes. But anyway, Robert. Uh, messaged me back and uh, he recommended 30 foot pounds on these okay and you can see i got my handy dandy up oh, it's upside down but anyway 30 foot pounds so brandon's going to attempt to try to hold this i've got them snugged got loctite on them and we're going to attempt to try to do this okay Thirty foot pounds. Got them all done here, okay. And um, also, I did line my marks back up here. At uh, you know, I put these at ninety degrees, and and lined all that back up. So that is complete, okay. Um, now, so as you can see, you will see my my holes here, okay. So I'm going to attempt to run the uh, aircraft wiring in there. These are Loctited with red Loctite. And they are uh, torqued at 30 foot pounds. Most of the time, I'd call this done, although they've been breaking out. So this is the two options that we have um, so far. You can get these TIG welded and tacked in a couple of different places to keep them from backing out, or you can use the wire, which I'm going to choose to use the wire. I personally think it might be better. Um, but anyway, we're we're going to attempt to do that. So let me go get the wire and let's do we that. Got all these Loctited. And I, uh, we have taken um, aircraft wire. We're using 041. Um, I got some smaller stuff over there, but I thought the 041 would be better, even though it's a devil to work with. And 
Um, I'm not positively correct that I like everything, but I think it's better than what, than nothing, okay? And I'm not so sure that if I like the way I did this. Um, I, I had considered doing these four and these four, um, but then, then I decided against that and decided to do two, 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 and two. So, so the theory behind this basically is, is, uh, the aircraft wiring, um, keeps these tight. It, it won't allow it to turn at all. It, it is what the theory behind this is. And, and so essentially you tie these two together. You know what I mean? So if, if, if this one doesn't turn, this one's not going to turn is it, essentially what we're trying to do here now. It's not the prettiest wiring I've ever seen, okay, and I'm not a professional, but I, I, you know, I, I don't know that I like what I did, but I don't know that I don't want to do anything, and I don't know that I want to attack them. So, I, I'm, I'm satisfied, I think, with what I see here. Um, let's try it, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, um, the other ones that I've done, I've not done anything, so this is just extra assurance, so... Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know what you guys are doing. Did I do this, I, you know, some kind of different way to make it better? But um, we are out of time. We are going to throw this thing in. Uh, we're going to assemble this this front diff and, um, and ride out with what we got. We're going to brake clean all this and clean it all up, air dry it, or blow dry it, and uh, make sure there's nothing, you know, make sure we don't have anything. So... So that's that's what happened there, okay? So that's that's an idea about what we got going on. Um, maybe the next time that I do this, I order ARP bolts and um, and Loctite on piddle men. Um, so I don't know. All right. So so one more important thing I want to show you guys uh, before we assemble this. So so there was this little shim here. I want to make sure um, I I didn't show you when we removed it. But this shim goes on. This nose here, okay, it's just a shim to hold the 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 the, the spacing out here. So um, what it does, it goes on the longer nose, okay, and then it just slides down in there. So what would happen was is um, this would go together, you know, like this, and essentially that would be the shim. You know, I mean, the, well, <laughs> of course it didn't go all the way down there. So we we still got to clean all this, and then and then essentially this goes on you know here so um, let's get all this stuff cleaned up we'll come back and uh, we'll throw this thing together so everything's cleaned up we got it all got it all slid together and um that this thing only goes one way you can't get it you can't get it sideways or or different or out of clock so uh these were not loctited i, I am gonna loctite these oh i don't know what that is there um, I'm going to Loctite these, even though th this is aluminum, and I know most of the time you don't do that, um, but I'm going to. All right, that pretty much concludes uh, our uh, removing the Visco lock and uh, assemble. So I got everything torqued back down, and, um, you know, no, no oils in this thing yet, but uh, it does spin real freely there. So uh, we still have to put the nose on here from the, the old diff, and uh, I do have a new nut or a new bolt for that. It's just where the dry shaft goes in. So anyway, um, so, so, so that's pretty much the, uh, the, the front dip. Now, um, it's gotten pretty late on us, obviously. Um, I mess with those darn wire things for those aircraft wiring for, for a while, just because I kept going back and forth on it. And, um, you know, hopefully it's better than what we had. Okay. So more than likely, you know, I know we're not, they're getting ready to put everything up. Uh, we are going in for tonight. So, so tonight is Monday night and um, we uh, would love and would like to go ride this uh, or he'd like to go practice this thing out at the camp on Wednesday night. So we have tomorrow night. So we'll get out here in the morning. We'll probably throw it in in the morning. And, uh, and then tomorrow night we have uh, just prep, you know, and finish it up and then get the... Um... Brandon, we put a new belt on this thing or not? you're probably okay so uh what was it mason dixon we put the belt or we put the mason dixon belt on there and then you've got the a little over an hour okay all right so we're going to attempt not to put another belt on there and um 
probably not service the oil you know, it's just got the one ftr ratio the day on there so uh then other than that we're gonna we're gonna get out to the property uh to the camp out there and ride so um i'm gonna close out this video here and we'll start a new one maybe tomorrow but uh anyway um that's the uh that's the differential and um you know I'm, i think i'm satisfied the way it turned out um uh, like I said, I've kept going back and forth on different ways of doing it. But anyway, um, guys, guys, I appreciate uh, appreciate everything. I appreciate all the uh, the views. Our, our views are going up, and uh, um, uh, the new GoPro tens has really made it a, made it made me excited, and uh, and made I think some of the video taping some the the GoPro seven was just all over the darn place. And uh, um, not that I'm a professional by any means, but it, but it, the GoPro ten does make it. Um, it, it helps me you know what i mean so uh and it was very easy to to transfer that kind of stuff so i was able to make it all work out so good so very excited about that but i, I appreciate you guys watching our videos and and like comment and share and um we'll get some videos of these kids out riding and uh we'll catch you at another time thank you